Welcome to our Bot City demonstration. We'll explore how Bot City's platform can revolutionize your automation processes. From cost savings to fast executions, Bot City offers governance and orchestration for your automations. You can say goodbye to vendor lock in and technical constraints and unlock the full potential of intelligent automation with a single comprehensive solution. With just three simple steps, you can have your automation ready for execution on the Bot City orchestrator. The easy deploy process streamlines the creation of a new automation or the update of an existing one in the platform. So here's how it works. Step one is to actually create or update your automation. Step two is to deploy your bot associated with the automation. And then step three is to actually select the runner that you want to process the automation. So let's go ahead and follow those steps. I'm going to create a new automation, select the repository and also add a description. Now I can simply upload the bots that I want associated with this automation. This is my version 1.0, the technology is Python. And now I can simply select the runner. I could select uh, all of them or a couple of them. I'm going to just select one of them for this demonstration. So now we can go ahead and create a new task. I'm going to mark this as a test task and create it. We can see the task is already in queue, waiting for the runner to finish processing the other automation that it's running currently. And then it will start running the automation that we just inputted in the queue. We can look at some of the details that will be available for us once the automation uh, finishes. So this is the view of the specific task. We can see that it's in queue. And we can also see some details down here, such as the priority level that we've defined. So in this case, it's set to zero. The name of the automation that we created, the user, I've marked this as a test task. So I can see that in here and the runner allocated. So now we can see that our task is running and the state changed in here as well. And we have a couple of alerts and also an error to show you how you can see alerts and errors in real time during the execution of your automations. There we go, our task finished processing. And now we can see that there's an error in here. And we actually created that error to show you how we can uh, follow up with errors in real time during the execution. So this is the stack trace of the exact uh, code line that generated this error. We can also send a screenshot back to the orchestrator so that makes it easier for the operations team to actually see what's going on in the time of the error via the platform. And we can add tags. So these ones are uh, standard tags, but we can also add custom tags to add more information that's relevant to our process. And then we can also add attachments and that can be any kind of file. We have the pip list and also the requirements for that automation. So we can validate if something went wrong during the execution. We can also see the alerts. So alerts are a way to have your code talk to the orchestrator and then the operations team or any person that's relevant to the process can follow along and see what is going on during the execution. So we could have an information such as the process has started. We can uh, also add a warning such as the number is invalid for some reason and also alert someone of a specific error. And these alerts can be customized to be sent via email teams and we can select the specific person to receive a specific alert as well. So that can be pretty useful for maintenance. And then we can also add a result file. So result files or artifacts are any type of file that is relevant to the process and that you want to upload back to the orchestrator in order for someone to see that specific file. So in this case, it's just a simple text file, but we can upload an image, a report, a spreadsheet of any kind, a PDF file. That's really up to you. Now we triggered this automation manually, but we can also schedule an automation and we can use different kind of rules in order to create new schedules. So let me go ahead and show you. Um, this is the demo. Now, as for schedule type, I could use cron expressions, but I'm going to use the calendar to show you how I can set up my frequency. So I am going to say that this automation runs weekly. So um, Monday through Friday, and my automation is going to run at 2 a.m. It can start immediately. So now I have my uh, schedule basically ready to set up. Once I hit schedule, it's going to actually record that in the orchestrator and then it is going to create a new automation every day of the week at 2 a.m. for me. Now there we go, that's pretty easy. We can also check on the runners in here so I can actually take a sneak peek of what is going on in those runners. So let me show you. 
Um, so those are actual screenshots in real time from those runners. And what's cool about it is that I can go to the logs and see what is going on in real time during the execution in that specific machine. So that means that I don't need to have access to that machine. I can reach out to the runners tab in the orchestrator and actually see the logs in real time in here. So that can help in maintenance or seeing if an error occurred and what was going on in the machine during the execution. So it's pretty useful for quick access. And talking about logs, we actually have a custom execution log um, that we can set up in here. So I already have a demo um, log in here just to show you the functionality itself. So I'm logging the task ID, a simple message such as hello world and the date comes here um, automatically. So logging is pretty important in a process and sending the log back to the orchestrator allows the team to actually follow along during the execution and see what items were processed or anything else that's relevant to your execution. It's also pretty easy to add the log to your execution. So we have a code snippet ready for you. And you can also export the logs as JSON, CSV or Excel so that makes it easier for you to see and get the insights you need from the execution log. The Bot City Orchestrator also offers a credential storage vault. So closer to schedules in here, we can store the credentials here in the orchestrator. So that way we don't need to have any kind of credentials locally in the code. Um, so it's pretty easy to use them as well. As you can see here in the snippet generator, it's getting the credential using the get credential from our SDK and assigning them to a specific variable. We can also process items in batches using the data. It's a queue manager for items that need to be processed in batches. So it's quite common to see automation processes that rely on database records to process multiple entries at once. So we can do that using the data pool uploading like CSV file. We can also do all of those operations via API using our SDK. And I am going to import a zip code in here. There we go. So all of those are from my CSV file. And simply from importing that CSV into my data pool, I have that the data pool set up to automatically create a task for me in order to process those pending items. So we can um, follow along and see the execution here in real time. And then we have total control of the life cycle of each individual item. So now we can see that this item is currently being processed. So we can actually see the specifics, the value that's being processed. And some items are purposely going to fail in order to show you, there we go, that we can have a quick way to see if something went wrong. And once those items fail, we can actually go to the task ID itself and see the trace back of the error. So we can see exactly the line and also a screenshot. So I can just quickly see that the item failed because it wasn't a valid zip code. So it that's the reason. It wasn't that the system was unavailable or the machine wasn't available. So I can quickly see and troubleshoot what is going on. In order to gain insights on our RPA operation, we can actually use the Bot City Insight in order to get a clear view of critical platform data and key process indicators. To create effective dashboards, you need to set up and input all the necessary information in advance. So this is done in the data input section, and there you can configure data that forms the foundation of your dashboards. So here we have the ROI. So this metric measures the efficiency and profitability of your RPA investment. It shows the financial benefit that you've gained in comparison to the initial cost of implementation and ongoing maintenance of your RPA solution. Total savings refers to the quantifiable financial benefits gained from implementing the automation. It includes all direct and indirect cost reductions, and that focus on human costs per processed item. Unlike ROI, it doesn't factor in the initial investment, but rather highlights the savings achieved through automation. And next, we have the FT indicator, which stands for full-time equivalent. And this metric helps you to measure productivity by comparing how many items a robot can process versus what a human can handle in the same time frame. So it's a key way to assess the impacts of the automation on your workforce. In the RPA initiative here, we can find a showcase of the evolution of your RPA efforts over time. So from this section, you can then easily access detailed reports on the latest automation tasks, giving you a clear view of processed items and overall progress. In the runners data, we can track metrics related to runners, including utilization rates and 
average tasks executed per day. The utilization versus capacity dashboard shows the occupancy of each runner based on the selected time frame. And additionally, we can dive into detailed dashboards that break down tasks per runners, items process, and items with failures. And we can also check the reports so we can easily access detailed data to export it for further analysis. So for instance, if I go to the list in the runners, I can sort the reports by various attributes. I can filter them by specific uh, time periods and I can also export them in order to get the insights that I need. And it doesn't stop there. But City Insights allows you to integrate the orchestrator data with Power BI and also other platforms via API. So this means that you can seamlessly combine the existing tools that you are already familiar with along with the data reported from Bot City Insights. Thank you for watching our Bot City demo. So we've covered how to deploy automations, manage tasks, handle errors, and use the data pool. We also looked at scheduling, credential management, and performance insights. So if you're ready to unlock the full potential of secure intelligent automation, sign up today for a free trial at botcity.dev. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to helping you secure your automation future with BotCity. Bye-bye.